Hi, this is Melanie from Hook to the Left and today we're going to be learning how to make this washcloth. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back to Hook to the Left and today we're going to be learning this particular washcloth. This is a stitch that I've already taught in my stitch study series. I'll link that up above. And um, so it's called the Spider Stitch. It's a nice, lightly textured stitch and it makes it for a very good washcloth. So I've done this in a few different colors and the yarns that I have used for this particular washcloth are 100% cotton. Um, it's not what I guess some people would call kitchen cotton. It's not the cotton, um, it is 100% cotton, but Burnett Handicrafter or um, the the Lily Sugar uh, Peaches and Cream, those particular cottons are a little bit rougher than the cotton I'm using. Um, this cotton would make a great face cloth. That are, the one that I'm using would make a great face cloth or dishcloth in the kitchen. Whichever you choose, it's still 100% cotton. It's just a lot softer than those two cottons. So the what I've used on this one and this one is um, Hobby Lobby's. I love this cotton. This is my, my absolute favorite cotton. It's super soft um, and it comes um, in so many different colors. I've done so many projects in different colors on this. Mixed colors. It comes like a tweed color, which this is almost like a tweed. It has a little flecks of color. It comes um, just di many, many, many different colors. You, you just, you have your, your choice is immense if you go there and to buy this cotton. I love this cotton rather. Um, and it is it, the the skein itself does come um, it's three ounces uh, 85 grams 153 yards or 140 meters and it is a worsted weight cotton and I'm not going to get too much more into the yarn I just want to let you know about it this particular skein is three dollars and 79 cents and again that's for 153 yards now, more recently, Walmart has come, Mainstays has come out with a brand. Um, it's part of their basic line. This is also 100% cotton. And this is the first cotton that I found that is almost as soft as the I love this cotton. The difference is, is there's not that many options in this. So, it comes in solid options. So, you've got here, I'll grab my bag really quick. You have this blue here. You have, of course, white and black and gray. Then you have this kind of dusty rose. And you also have this like seafoam green. Um, so you have so, uh, quite a few solid color options, but not nearly as many options as you have with I Love This Cotton. So just keep that in mind. But this is a great substitute. It's also much cheaper, especially if you're looking for solid colors. If you want uh, more of a tweedy look, you can always uh, make a thicker fabric and combine two strands together or more. Um, but this one comes with, it's also a medium worsted weight, of course. And it comes with, where's the yardage? Where is that yardage? Here we go. So it comes with 180 yards um, or 165 meters, 3.5 ounces or 100 grams. So I think that's slightly more, yeah, it's slightly more than what you get in the, um, the I Love This Cotton Scheme. And it's cheaper. This is, I, I can't even remember, I'm sorry, but it's somewhere around like 280 something is the price of, of this particular scheme of yarn. Totally worth it. Um, I couldn't recommend this enough or I Love This Cotton enough. For your cotton projects. They're just super soft to the skin um, and also you know winter we like to make stuff in cotton so uh, just keep that in mind whenever you are creating that you have this option out there for you. Alright so I did have a yarn barf incident when I was pulling trying to pull out some yarn for uh, <laughs> for this particular uh, video so I did have a yarn barf incident but you know that that happens when you mess with yarn you're gonna uh, sometimes get that yarn barf incident so that's what's going on here with this mess there and so I might have to mess with that a little bit as I go through the tutorial so speaking of tutorials why don't we go ahead and get started with it because I know that you're anxious to get started 
For this particular project, I started with 25 chains plus one. So I am going to use, and I, you know what, I should go over what else you need besides just the yarn. You do need a 5.5 millimeter hook. I am using, today I'm using my Clover Armor hook, which I'll have that link down below as well as the tulip hooks that I've been trying out as well. And you will also need a tape measure. This is my little elephant tape measure. You can use whichever one works best for you. Um, I do not count the rows up on this. I measure it. So I, I just count the, row, the number of chains across and then I measure it above up to make sure that I get a good square. I like having square washcloths. So, um, but you can always make a circle if you want. This little guy here will be linked down below. This little tape measure if you like him. And you need a pair of scissors. These are a pair of traveling scissors I got uh, about a year ago in a traveling um, uh, hook set. I will link just uh, have a link down below to just some traveling scissors in case you're interested in those and can find them useful. And finally, my favorite pair of needles. This is to weave in your ends. So my favorite needles is because they have the flexible eye and the thinner shaft so I can easily... oh. I got this one upside down. I use the orange one the most, but I can easily work them in and out of my project and get the, the um, yarn into the eye. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with a slip knot. If you need a slower version of how to do a slip knot and chain, then I would suggest going and checking out my single crochet study, and I'll link that up above. Now before we get, uh, while I'm doing my chain, so just remember chain 20, if you're following along with me, um, of course you can make your, your washcloth any size, but if you want to make it about this size, right there, then um, you want to make it uh, 25 plus one. So let's go ahead and do that. And while we're chaining, I just want to say if you are interested in yarn hauls, reviews of yarn products, and other items uh, similar to that that have to do with crochet then please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell so that you're reminded each time I come out with a new video so let's go ahead and continue chaining our 25 chains and then let's meet back up at the end hello welcome back so I now have my 26 chains to start my project. So we're going to do this, this first, the first part of the cloth before we get to the border is going to be just like the spider stitch tutorial. But I'm going to go ahead and go through it for you in case you haven't seen that. So uh, the very beginning we want to go into the back loop and we're going to do one single crochet in the second back loop from your hook. Okay. Now we're going to skip one loop and we're going to go to the second loop and we're going to single crochet into that second loop. Remember we're working in the back loops. Okay, single crochet. Then we're going to chain one and then single cro crochet back into the same back loop that we just did that last single crochet in. Okay, so it's almost like a mini V-stitch, if you're familiar with the V-stitch. And that's the essence of your spider, um, your spider stitch. So, we're going to go ahead and continue on. I'm going to do a few more with you. Make sure you're working in the back loops. And what do I mean by back loops? When you're doing, when you look at your chain, the front of your chain looks like little, let me, they look like little V's. That's the front of your chain. Okay, when you're working in the back loop, you're flipping that over, okay, and you're working in those little humps that are in the back of your chain on the other side of the V, okay, and you can feel they're a little bit lumpy, so that's what I mean by working in the back loop, okay, when you do that, this, these neat V's that you have here will end up at the bottom of your work. Now we're going to put a border around the work, but if we weren't putting a border, 
this makes the bottom of your work look a lot neater when you work into the back loops. Okay? So let's go ahead and do a few more. I will tell you whenever I do this first row, I do end up with a lot of curl because I'm skipping loops. So I end up with a lot of curl at the bottom. That does, on my chain, that does work itself out. Okay? And it, it does, as you can see here, you know, these are straight edges. So this, it works itself out, but I wanted to make sure that you understand that as I'm working through this, you'll see a lot of curl, and it's a good chance you'll see the same on yours. Um, again, that works itself out, and it'll be okay. Okay, so don't stress about it if you start to see that curl, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do a few more together. So we're gonna skip one back loop, and we're gonna go into the next back loop after that, and we're gonna do a single crochet. I always struggle to get in that back loop. So if you struggle a little bit too, don't worry, you're not alone. I do the same thing. All right, let's go ahead and do that single crochet. Chain one. And then single crochet back into the same back loop. Okay, and I, I'm probably going to have a knot that I'm going to have to work out here at some point because of this yarn barf here. All right, so let's go ahead and do a couple more together. And hopefully I won't get distracted by a knot. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to skip the next back loop. And we're going to go into the one after that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do another single crochet. You want to skip the next back loop. And we're going to do a single crochet. So skip the next. Hold that. Focus. One of the drawbacks. So we're going to skip this next back loop and we're going to go into the next one after that and do a, a the same stitch series. So let's go ahead and go in there, single crochet, chain one, back into the same loop and do another single crochet. Okay, let's do that one more time together and then I'm going to leave you to finish out the row on your own. Okay, so let's go ahead and single crochet, chain one, and then single crochet into the same loop. So here's where you're seeing, see how I have a significant curl here? Like I said, this works itself out. I do, when I get finished with the row, I do also pull on it a little bit. Um, but it does work itself out as you work through the project. So don't sweat it if yours is doing the same thing. It's not uncommon. It, we're skipping rows and stuff, so that's why you're seeing this. Or skipping uh, stitches and then doing uh, like three stitches in one. So you start to see this curl happening. At least that's the way it works out for me. So if that's the way it's working out for you, don't sweat it. It'll work itself out in the project. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, let's do one more together. I know I said I was just going to do one more, but let's do one more together and then I'm going to leave you to finish out the row. So skip the next back loop and then we're going to go into the one after that. So we're going to do a single crochet, chain one, my blob is trying to get up in this frame here, and then do another single crochet into the same loop. Okay, so that's really the jack of it. You want to skip one, and then in that next one, you work a single crochet, a um, chain one, and then another single crochet all in the same loop, and then you skip a loop and do that again. All the way to the end, when you get to this last one, you're just going to do one single crochet like you did at the very beginning, where you did one single crochet, skipped a loop, and then you did your sequence, your single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So... Let's go ahead and work all the way to the end. I'll meet up with you before we do this last one and we'll do that one together, okay? So I will see you in just a few. Hi, welcome back and you will see here that we are at the end of our row and as you can see, it really straightened out. So I got a little bit of a curl on that tail end, but that's okay. So as, as you're working this particular chain, because you're skipping chains, adding extra stitches to one loop and etc., um, you're going to get some curl as you're working it. But once you finish your row, just give it a little bit of a tug 
and it just it, it really evens it out so like I said don't sweat things like that they tend to work themselves out um, for right now see it worked perfectly so I am in my last I'm ready to do my last stitch on this first row and I just wanted to point out to you if you take a look at it I just finished my last sequence here and it is a um, single crochet chain one single crochet so I'm sorry for the phone ringing there <coughs> I do not need to get it so again that's a single crochet chain one single crochet and now I have two more stitches left in my chain so we're gonna skip this this next back loop and in that final back loop we're going to do another single crochet so when you do each row you're gonna start with one single crochet and you're gonna end with one single crochet so that's like the head and the tail of your row and then in between is when you're going to do those those uh, single crochet chain one single crochet sequences so that's how that works all right so let's go ahead and chain one to get up to the next row okay so you chain one flip your work and you're going to go ahead and chain one into the same chain right here so right there in that first stitch you're gonna do a chain one okay I know sometimes we skip that one but not this time you're gonna do a single crochet into that one into that same stitch and then you're gonna go into the middle where your um, single chain was you had the single crochet the chain and the single crochet you're gonna go right into the middle of that stitch so underneath your single chain Okay. If you can't see it that well on this side, and I, and I mentioned this whenever I, sh I taught this spider stitch, if you can't see it, which it's right there is where you're going to go in, you're going to insert your hook, but if you can't see it that well on this side, if you flip your work, you see really well where your two stitches are. I'm going to put my hook down there. So you can see really well where your two stitches are okay um, from the side view so you see this that two little those two little marks there and those two little marks there well in between there is where you're gonna put your hook but you're gonna do it from the other side okay so on this side it looks like you're inserting your hook kind of right in the middle of a stitch but that's actually in between the two stitches so this is where you're going to insert your hook right there all right and then you do the same sequence that you were doing below you're going to do single crochet chain one single crochet so let me get my hook back in here and I'm going to go right in the middle and single crochet chain one and then right back in through and another single crochet okay so we're gonna do the same thing here like I said it looks like you're going right in the middle of your stitch but here it is right here where you're gonna be inserting your hook Let's see if I can lay that flat for you to see but it's right there where you're going to be inserting your hook okay right where the hump is to be honest with you right where that little hump is so that's where you're going to be inserting your hook so let's go ahead and do that again insert your hook and, and it can be a little tight so don't be afraid of that but especially if you're a tight crocheter like me so single crochet chain one and then single put your hook back through the same place and of course I didn't come back with the loop up so I got to do that again and single crochet okay so we're gonna do the same thing again we're gonna be putting our hook right through here okay and we're gonna do the same sequence so insert your hook and again sometimes it can be a little bit of a wrestling match for me okay and then 
single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And it's so funny because you do the V stitch and it's so easy to get in between those, but when you do the spider stitch, it's a lot harder because it's a shorter stitch. You're doing only single crochets instead of double crochets, so you don't have that, that space in between to get your hook in there. So let's do that again. We're going to get our hook in between the two single crochets, so it's underneath the chain stitch. Single crochet, chain stitch, put your hook back through the same spot and do another single crochet. All right, one more time together. So push your hook in between the two um, single crochets, pull through and, yep, see, I, I wrestle with them sometimes, so, um, so I'm gonna put my hook back through, yarn over, pull through and up a hoop, single crochet, chain one, and then I need to single crochet back into the same spot okay so let's just I, I want you to go ahead and continue out the road doing the same and I will meet up with you towards the end welcome back and we are at the end of our second row so I have put a single crochet chain one single crochet into the middle of the same sequence below so you see the little humps as we go across and that's that's where I did the single crochet chain one single crochet Okay, so I'm at the very end of the row and I'm at my chain one, it was a chain one stitch on the first row. So I'm going to go ahead and do, not chain one, a single crochet. I'm going to go ahead and do a single crochet into that stitch and then chain one to move up to the next row. Okay, so now we are completely finished with our second row. Got my yarn bar still going on over here, so please bear with me on that one. Um, but so we are on completed with our second row, and we're about to do the third row. So I'll do a little bit of this third row, meet up with you at the end, and do a little bit of the fourth row, and then I'm going to leave you to your own devices to finish out the cloth. Um, now I do not measure the number of uh, rows that I have in this. I just measure, make sure it's equidistant this way and this way because um, I like to make a square washcloth so that's where our little tape measure will come in so usually most of my cloths are seven by seven okay so seven inches across and seven inches uh, above sometimes my stitches end up being a little bit tighter so it's six and a half by six and a half sometimes a little bit looser but usually on average I my washcloths run about seven by seven uh, before I put on the border and it's going to be a very small border as you can see here and uh, okay so let's go ahead and get started with the next row um, so we've already chained one we've already chained one so now we're going to move into doing our single crochet and we're going to do that single crochet into the very first stitch and you'll oftentimes we'll skip that first stitch not in this particular case we're going to do a chain one in that same stitch now again we're going to go back into the middle and I'm going to show you here it's going to go in between here is where your hook is going to go so um, but that that's really in between the two stitches and that's where your chain one is and that's where you want to put your next your chain sequence so or not chain sequence stitch sequence so we're going to go ahead and put our hook in there pull up a loop single crochet chain one and then do another single crochet into the same exact spot now we're going to move to the next little hump on your your work and do the same exact thing this is where you're going to put right here that's where you're going to put your um hook so push that through do a single crochet chain one and then do another single crochet okay so now we move to the next little hump and same thing we're going to put right here in between what looks like one stitch but it's actually the two stitches coming together we're going to put our hook here and that's right underneath your chain one stitch Okay, so we're gonna push our hook through, chain one, or excuse me, single crochet, chain one, and then another single crochet. 
Let's do one more together and then I'm going to leave you to go to the end of the row and then I'll meet up with you there. So again we're going to go into the hump. It looks like you're going in the middle of a stitch but it's actually between, get my hand underneath there. So we're, it looks like you might be going into the middle of a stitch. It's actually in between the two stitches right underneath your chain one. There we go, right underneath your chain one. And that's where you're going to do your work. So push through in between those two stitches, do single crochet, chain one, and then another single crochet. Okay, so one more together. All right. And uh, again, we're going to go to the next lump. That's one thing that really helps with this one is you can see you're going to work do your work in, in each little hump there. But here again, you're going to put your hook here. You're going to put your hook right here. It looks like it's in the middle of the stitch but it's actually in between the stitch here in the front and a stitch here in the back and it's right underneath that single chain. So that's where you're going to put your hook. So you push it through there. Okay, do a single crochet, chain one, and then another single crochet. Okay, next one we're going to push through. I'm going to let you find it this time. If you have problems though, just rewind back a little bit and you can find it. Push through, single crochet, chain one, and then another single crochet. Alright, I'm going to leave you, it looks like I need to unravel this a little bit here, but um, I'm going to leave you to do, finish out the row on your own. On, excuse me, on your own, and I will again meet up with you at the end. Welcome back. We're at the end of our third row, and um, we just need to put that final stitch into the final single crochet into the single crochet that was below. So just do one single crochet, chain one, and flip your work. So now we're going to be working on the fourth row. This is the last row that I'm going to do a little bit with you. And then um, from there, I want you to go ahead and finish out your row on your own. I do want to make sure that you measure across um, as you're working up. So here, this is not the best way to measure across here. I like to do it closer to what looks like it's going to be the middle. But here, it, and it, it <laughs> I told you, usually mine's 7 by 7. And as you can see, it's running about 7 inches. So, um that's how I, I don't count the number of rows going up. I just measure. So use your handy dandy measure tool. And, um, and then that way you'll get your, your equal distance length and width. Cause I do like to have a square washcloth, but let's go ahead and do the next few stitches together. And then I'll leave you off to finish out the cloth, that part of the cloth on your own. And then we'll work on the border together. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a single crochet into this first stitch. And now we're going to work into the hump again. So right here is where I'm going to put in my hook. Do a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And now I'm going to skip over to the next one. And again, it looks like you're going into, let me back up a little bit. It looks like you're going into the middle of a stitch, but really your stitch is in front of it and behind it and then right here is where you're going to put your hook because that's right underneath the um, single crochet. Okay, so let's go ahead and push your hook through, chain one, single crochet, and then chain one in that same space. Okay, so let's do that again. I'm going to let you find your own this time instead of showing you where they're at. If you do need some help with it, just rewind this video and it'll show you how to find your, your where you need to put your hook. But I'm going to go ahead and push my hook through the middle of that, just under my chain one. Okay, so I'm going to single crochet, chain one, and then go back into the same space and do another single crochet. Okay, go back to the middle where your chain, you know, you, you did that same sequence below and then go underneath your chain one, 
single crochet, chain one, go back into the same space, and do another single crochet. And I know the phone's been ringing a little bit while um, I've been filming this. I'm actually filming this on Labor Day, and apparently um, we forgot to forward our work phone. So you're hearing my, my work phone go off a little bit there. So just a heads up, that's what that's about and why I'm ignoring the phone calls because we are actually off today. Um, so I'm recording videos. Anyway, let's go ahead and go into the next sequence and do our sequence again. So single crochet, chain one, go back into the same spot and do a single crochet. I'm gonna do one more with you, fight with this little yarn bar for a little bit. <laughs> And then, uh, and so I'm going to do that one more and then I'm going to leave you to finish out the cloth on your own before we start the border. So single crochet, chain one, and then another single crochet. Okay, so let's go ahead. Why don't you go ahead and continue on with your, um, with your cloth. And I will meet up with you at the very end once you have an equal distance. So mine's going to be seven by seven and whatever you did whatever you need to make it match this then please continue that but for me it's seven by seven all right see with you meet up with you again at the end before we start the border thanks welcome back uh we are at the end of our cloth now so you can see here now if you stretch it out, and, and uh, to get these a perfect square so it doesn't have like, um, if you look on this one you see where it's got a little bit of a, an indentation over here, you know, you can stretch on it and warm it up a little bit. Um, you know, to, to uh, fix that, um, and that just comes from your know, normal tension and everything whenever you're, um, actually that's the top of my cloth and of course it's always at the top that I get that little indentation. Um, Anyway, it's it it you can block, so um, that's that's where you get a foam and and one of these days, especially um, I have a blank that I'm working on that does require blocking, but one of these days I am going to uh, have a little thing showing uh, how to block something small, something bigger is a little bit more complicated I think, but for something small. I'll show you how to block this, but basically you pin it down to the shape that you want and then you wet it and then it, it becomes that shape. So that's, that's what blocking is. Um, so that's how you can, you can get away, um, you know, get rid of like these little dips and stuff like that. Um, just natural progression, at least for me, uh, you may be different, but even here you see at the top, it dips a little bit. Um, anyway, let's get back to the project. Um, as you can see here, so I've measured it. Now this is, I told you I usually run when I'm doing these um, and I do the same number of chains and everything. It's just my tension changes between projects. So I run between six and a half to seven inches and this particular cloth ended up being a six and a half inch washcloth. Actually a little bit less. I guess, I, I guess I'm pretty tense today. <laughs> but uh, so this is uh, right around six and a half, and then uh, when I was measuring it to make sure I had the same height, it is again right around six and a half. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish making the cloth at this point. I am not gonna bind off because I'm gonna go straight into my border. Now, if you can do the stitches that we were doing here, then you can do the border because I just added a stitch, a chain, um, to the stitch sections of um, <clears throat> this particular cloth uh, for the border to get a, it just a little bit bumpier. And then I went down the sides using the same stitch. So let's go ahead and do the first row. So just like before, you wanna chain one. We're gonna turn our work. Now um, in this first, this, this, so we're going to do a single crochet into this stitch right here. So single crochet into here. Okay, and now we're going to do just like we were doing. We're going to go into the middle where our chain one is. We're going to go into the middle. And now instead of doing a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, we're going to do a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. 
and um, this just makes a very subtle border but it makes it uh, even throughout your entire project so that you can give this away as what feels like a finished and completed project you can finish your rag right here or rag I call it a rag but it's washcloth whatever you want to call it you can finish it right here and not do the border if you like the way that this looks let's go ahead and leave it this way there's no reason to change it but I like to put a border on things especially as we get into our holiday season and I'm gonna be gifting a lot of these then um, I do like to put a border on them it just adds that little something extra so let's go ahead and continue on so we're gonna go ahead and go into that first stitch series um, underneath the single crochet or the single chain we're gonna single crochet this time we're gonna chain two and then we're gonna go back into the same stitch and do another single crochet. So it makes a little bit more of a defined hump than what you were what you have going on as you were doing your work before. Okay, so let's skip over to the next um, uh, next middle where, where the uh, the chain is. We're gonna put our hook into there, single crochet chain two and single crochet okay let's do one more together put your hook in the middle uh, just underneath the single uh, chain and then single crochet chain two and then single crochet into the same section so I'm going to move my uh, hook over here as you can see, move you a little bit closer. There's a little bit more, and here is where you got the single chain. So it's a little bit of a bump, but here you get a little bit more defined bump. And this is what we're going to be doing our border with. So continue on down to the end of the row, and uh, and then I'll meet back up with you at the end. Welcome back and we uh, finished doing the top of the border for our project now I'm going to show you how we're going to turn the corner so this is where if you were to do another row and then go up this is where you would do the single crochet so we're going to go ahead and do that do a single crochet now to turn the corner with this border you want to do three chains so one two three go ahead and turn so we can work our border along the side and then single crochet back into the same place you were work you work the first single crochet okay so now you have turned your quarter okay so um, we did 11 uh, the 11 of these stitches across these stitch combinations across so what we want to do as we go down the side we want to work in 11 even so it doesn't matter where you put this you know you can you can find your little spots here but you want to make sure between this stitch that I'm holding here and before you make your next corner stitch which is going to be here you want 11 of those stitch combinations which is the single crochet two chains single crochet so you want to count this across now um, one thing this you get these little humps as you're doing your rows right so you can count those which I would start with say like this one here so you do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay so um, you can actually use these as a guide just know that you need to skip one of them as you work your, your way across okay because there's 12 here 12 of those here and we only need 11 of these stitch combinations okay so um, I'm not going to dictate where you put your your hook and, and make those stitches um, you go ahead and determine that but just do try and make them as evenly across as you can and only make 11 of those stitch combinations and I will meet up with you before we turn that corner. Welcome back, and um, as you can see, I'm finished with my uh, edge. 
so I've got 11 stitches going from um, this is where I turn the corner but between here and where my hook is and I'm about to turn the corner again so you should have not a, 11 stitches total but you have 11 what I call stitch sets so you have your single crochet two chains single crochet single crochet <coughs> excuse me two chains single crochet single crochet two chains single crochet and so on 11 times down the side now we're going to turn the corner again and we're going to start working on the bottom. Now when we get to this we have a stitch, sorry, as we get here we have a stitch right here that we can go into and then we also have the chain and you see how that's got a lot of room in it. If we work our stitch right here then it'll look a little bit messy. We can work See, I'm going to pull this up so I can kind of show you. We can work in here, which is underneath the bottom, which is what we are going to do. So this is where we're going to, this chain right here, or this stitch right here is where we're going to turn that corner through. And we're going to work over, as we're going down this row, we're going to work over this, um, our tail. Okay? So let me go ahead and pull this back on. Okay. So... We're going to do a single crochet. We're, remember, we're turning a corner. So we're going to chain three, two, three, turn the corner, and then we're going to go back into the same, same stitch and do another single crochet. Okay? So now you have your corner done. And now we're going to work the bottom. Okay, and this is, this is your chain that you're seeing across here. So, see, you can see it a little bit better when you look at it that way. Now, if you remember correctly, we did each of these sections, um, we skipped a chain and did each of these sections. So, and you can kind of see when you're looking at the work, you see that line going up? That is the top of your, um, each little little chain uh, grouping so that line you're seeing right there so um, you can use that as a guide and know that that's where you need to put each of your but uh, in the corresponding stitch down below but each of your chain or excuse me single crochet two chains single crochet okay by using that line that's developed from your stitch work okay so again that's single crochet, two chains, single crochet. So my very first one is right here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and go in. And you can see the spaces too where you made the, you did the stitch work here. Again, there's a space there. And again, as you work down, there's a space there. So that's another good indication of where you need to put your work. But um, just be careful because you want to make sure you're doing 11 across just like you did 11 across this end and 11 down the side. You're going to do 11 across this way and 11 down this side. So go ahead and work your 11 chain set or uh, stitch sets which are single crochet, two chains, single crochet and then work it across to the end. Now I'm going to do a couple with you. I don't want to leave you to your own devices completely. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple with you. Alright, that is what I need to work over. So I'm going to go into this piece here and single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. Just that. Okay, I'm going to do the next one. Again, I'm going to go into that space where I know I did the stitch work before. Single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. I'm going to do this one more time with you, and then I'll leave you to uh, work, work the row all the way to the end until we go, get to that corner, and I will join back up with you to turn that corner. So again, I'm going to go in where I could see that I did the stitch work before, so you have that space. Single crochet, chain two, 
and single crochet. So keep that up all the way to the end of your row and then um, I'm going to meet back up with you to turn that corner. Welcome back and we're at the end of doing uh, working your um, border row into the chain at the bottom of your project. So there should be 11 humps or you know where you did 11 of the stitch sets as you worked your way across the bottom. Now we need to, chain, to turn that corner again. Okay, so we're gonna do the same stitch combination to turn the corner. Oh, and it looks like I didn't pull fully through. There we go. All right, so you're gonna use the same stitch combination. Now I don't, I can put it right here, and that is probably gonna be, let's see. Yeah, um, so I'm looking at this. This is the bottom stitch right here. Oh, sorry. This is your bottom stitch. Okay, this is where you just worked in, which that looks like a big gaping hole, but that, that'll work itself out. Here is the bottom of the chain right here, and then you go into your side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work into the bottom of this chain. Okay, so we're gonna do a single crochet, three chains, and then do another single crochet in that same spot after you turned the corner and then we're going to work 11 of that same stitch series down the side but let's go ahead and do that turn that corner okay so we're going to go into here single crochet chain three and then go into that same stitch um, and I kind of like to turn the corner a little bit so that the the stitch rests on the right the correct side okay and then do a single crochet okay so now we're working on our last row of border all right so and it's just going to be the same as the other side so what you want to do is you're going to work 11 across uh, and then we need to be able to do our corner here now we've already done part of that corner but i'll get to that whenever we get there um, but for now let's work 11 even across down the side okay so I'm gonna leave you to that well I'm gonna do a couple with you first and then I'll leave you to finish it so I'm gonna go ahead and go here single crochet chain two and then single crochet into the same area where you did that first single crochet all right, and then all right, this gets tough because you want to evenly space it, but you also want to make sure that you have 11 going across. And, and I'm going to tell you, don't be afraid. If you get to here and you realize you're at number 11, all right, let me frog it back to here and then um, figure out what it takes to get me to, to do 11 down this way. So just a heads up on that. Don't be afraid to frog your work if you need to, to get that even number of stitches going across down there. All right, so I'm going to work into here single crochet chain two and single crochet back into the same area that I was working that stitch combination and then again single crochet chain two and single crochet into that bit same stitch okay so I'm gonna leave you to go on and do the rest of this row on your own again remember you want 11 of those stitch combinations evenly across the side and then when I will come back to you so that we can turn this corner and then um, finish off our work okay so I have just f finished my last row here and um, so I have 11 evenly uh, spaced stitch sets um, across this end and now I just need to do my very last corner Okay, so I don't know if you recall, but when back when we first started this, um, the border, we did a, a single crochet and then we started the border. So you already have the last part of your, um, your corner done. So you're going to slip stitch into that. And I know I haven't taught the slip stitch yet on this channel, so I will do that one slowly. 
but uh, so the first thing you're gonna do is this is where your single the very first single crochet when you started your border it went in right here so this is where you're going to be working your corner into this section right there so let's go ahead and do a single crochet then chain three because you are turning a corner two three and then that first single crochet that you did when you before you started your border work which is right here that first section right there that you're going to slip stitch right through there let me take that stitch right through there so you see how it you almost pull it up like you're going to do a single crochet but instead of doing that what you do is you continue pulling straight through your loop so you end up with one loop on your hook so from here we're going to go ahead and fasten off and then we just have the one end that we need to weave in since we worked over our um, tail from when we started whenever we did that bottom border so just tighten that up and then work that into your stitches make sure you go back and forth at least three times to, to lock your stitches in so and now you have a beautiful washcloth rag dish rag whatever you want to call it um, that you can gift for you know the, the holidays coming out so this is this will make a great gift for holidays or even if say you even want to do like a little spa basket for somebody um, which I that's what I did last year when I'll insert a picture um, over here somewhere of the spa basket that I did last year for some family members um, but anyway if you want to gift something like that then this is something great that you can add into that spa basket or you can just give them a gift of uh, rags maybe it's just your neighbor and you want to give them a little something you can give them a gift of these washcloths so it would come out great and you know I have another tutorial which I'll link up above right now and that one is for a scrubby so if you want to give them a kitchen set of you know the washcloths as well as scrubbies then you can do that as well and um, uh, both of those are available right now on my channel and you are welcome to follow along and get those out or even if you have a little Etsy shop you're welcome not to sell the pattern but to sell the uh, end product you're welcome to do that as well so I am weaving these ends if you like these tutorials and you also like yarn hauls and stitch study tutorials and um, review of crochet projects or not projects but products uh, crochet related products then please feel free to hit that subscribe button and the bell and uh, you will be reminded each time I put out a brand new video and I try to do that at least once a week if not twice a week I am I always do once a week but more often than not you'll see a couple videos a week come from me and don't forget to hit like button if you like this project and you are gonna make many of these for your self or for gifts as the holiday season approaches and there you go there's all there's the the rags um, or the washcloths so in, I think it's beautiful stitches here and uh, I think that you'll really enjoy this washcloth as you use it and this cotton by the way that I'm using it is soft enough to make this a face cloth it is really that soft so um, that is it you guys have a wonderful day thank you so much for joining me and subscribing I really appreciate every one of you guys um, I just thank you I can't can't express that enough so you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon bye bye chain one single crochet or chain excuse me
let me back up. I'm going to take that out because I was saying that all wrong. 